After years of Starship development, its sleek, bullet-shaped design, notably without landing legs, has become an iconic sight. However, SpaceX's drive for innovation knows no limits, and neither does its design philosophy. Now, the long-speculated Starship with landing legs, a concept beloved by many, myself included, could be making a return, unlocking new landing possibilities beyond the current approach. But why would SpaceX need to equip Starship with landing legs, and how might this impact the catching system with Mechazilla's arms? Let's dive into the details on today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX currently employs the most innovative landing method in the industry, a robotic arm system mounted on a tower to catch Starship's returning stages. The advantages of this system are clear. By enabling Starship to return directly to its launch site, SpaceX significantly reduces turnaround time for rapid refurbishment and reusability. With Megazilla's catching system, Starship does not require landing legs, as Musk has emphasized. This eliminates unnecessary mass and complexity, improving overall efficiency. However, despite its advantages, this design faces significant challenges for future missions. One of the most pressing concerns is planetary landings. On the Moon or Mars, a catching tower will not exist initially. In early missions, Starship must land entirely unassisted, yet it is a 50-meter-tall vehicle, potentially even longer in future versions. Without landing legs, achieving stability on uneven terrain will be extremely difficult. Lunar and Martian surfaces contain craters, rocky landscapes, and unpredictable terrain, increasing the risk of tipping over. In the worst-case scenario, Starship could collapse, leading to mission failure and significant risks to crew and cargo. Clearly, adding landing legs is a necessary evolution for safe planetary operations. Back on Earth, Starship's Earth-to-Earth -Earth transportation plan also raises the need for landing legs. The U.S. Air Force recently reinforced this vision, announcing potential landing pads for Starship at Johnson Island to support the Rocket Cargo Vanguard program. This initiative aims to deliver military cargo anywhere in the world in 90 minutes or less. However, the USAF has not specified whether landing infrastructure will involve a catching tower or a Falcon 9-style landing zone. If no catching tower is constructed, Starship will require landing legs for safe and efficient touchdown. Additionally, SpaceX has long explored the possibility of landing Starship on a drone ship, much like Falcon 9's offshore recoveries. This approach offers several key advantages, including minimizing risks to populated areas and launch facilities, providing greater flexibility in landing locations, and optimizing mission efficiency by enabling more direct return trajectories. However, landing on a floating platform requires a stable touchdown system. Falcon 9 succeeds in this by using landing legs, which provides structural support and adaptability to ocean conditions like waves and wind. Some have speculated that SpaceX could install a catching tower on drone ships, but this would introduce major engineering challenges and reduce the mobility of the drone ships. A more practical solution would be to equip Starship with retractable landing legs, ensuring safe ocean landings without overcomplicating the recovery process. If SpaceX moves forward with this concept, changes would need to be implemented soon. The USAF's Starship landing pad proposal could receive approval within the next few months. Specifically, the USAF is expected to release further details this month, followed by a public comment period lasting approximately one month. If everything proceeds smoothly, construction on the landing pad could begin as early as May or June. Given SpaceX's experience in rapidly developing infrastructure, landing pads could be operational by the end of 2025 or early 2026. To align with this timeline, Starship with landing legs would need to be manufactured and tested soon. Meanwhile, SpaceX's lunar ambitions are advancing rapidly. Artemis 3 is scheduled for 2027, but an uncrewed Starship HLS, or Human Landing System mission, could occur even earlier as a test flight. If landing legs are to be integrated, a prototype could be revealed this year or in early 2026 to ensure ample testing before the Artemis mission. So, are you excited about the return of Starship with landing legs? Let us know with your thoughts by responding with yes or no, along with your reasons, in the comment section down below. 
Of course, everything has trade-offs, and while adding landing legs offers clear benefits, it also introduces several challenges. First, landing stability remains a major concern. Even with landing legs, touchdown is never guaranteed to be smooth or successful. In recent years, multiple landers from NASA and other space agencies have experienced failed landings, including Intuitive Machine's Nova Sea landers and Japan's SLIM mission. Despite having landing legs, these spacecraft still faced significant risks, with some tipping over due to unstable terrain. This issue becomes even more complex for Starship, as its towering height and larger mass make it more susceptible to balanced challenges, especially on the uneven cratered surfaces of the Moon and Mars. Additionally, landing legs must be extremely durable. Starship's landing mass could reach up to 200 tons, factoring in payload, fuel, and dry vehicle weight. If the landing legs are not strong enough, they could fail over time, even if the initial touchdown is successful. There's also the issue of mass and complexity. Integrating landing legs increases overall vehicle weight, potentially reducing payload capacity. Moreover, re-entry poses another challenge. If the legs are not properly protected, they could burn up due to extreme aerodynamic heating. A potential solution would be to redesign the landing legs to be retractable, similar to Falcon 9's folding mechanism. This would allow them to remain stowed during flight and re-entry, deploying only during landing. To further enhance stability, SpaceX could incorporate mechanical latches, shock absorbers, or hydraulic air piston systems, enabling better adaptability to diverse landing terrains. Now, the question is, will the addition of landing legs affect Starship's catching method? The answer is probably no. As analyzed earlier, Megazilla's arm-based catching system offers major advantages particularly in boosting launch frequency and achieving full reusability. SpaceX envisions a future with multiple Starship launches per day, operating at high cadence and low cost. For such a goal, no landing method is more efficient than catching Starship directly with Megazilla, eliminating the need for landing legs and enabling rapid turnaround for relaunch. Because of this, adding landing legs does not interfere with Starship's core infrastructure. In fact, SpaceX is expanding the Megazilla system at both Starbase and Cape Canaveral, reinforcing its long-term commitment to high-frequency Starship operations. The catching method remains a crucial part of Starship's rapid reuse strategy, making it a defining feature that sets SpaceX apart from other launch providers. Ultimately, the two Starship variants, one with landing legs and one optimized for Megazilla, will coexist rather than compete. Each serves a distinct purpose, allowing Starship to adapt to different mission profiles. This flexibility and operational diversity will be key to making Starship the most versatile and capable launch system ever built. This would be a significant boost to SpaceX's already dominant position in landing and reusability. Right now, the Falcon rocket family benefits from two distinct landing methods, touchdown in designated landing zones and precision landings on autonomous drone ships. This dual approach has given SpaceX unmatched flexibility, allowing it to adapt to the diverse demands of Falcon rocket missions. As a result, records continue to be shattered. To date, SpaceX has successfully landed Falcon boosters more than 420 times, an achievement that remains unmatched in the industry. Many of these boosters have been reused multiple times, with B-1067 leading the pack at 26 launches and landings, while B-1088 set a record turnaround time of just 9 days. These milestones highlight the efficiency and reliability of SpaceX's reusable launch system. Moreover, this reusability has driven a sharp increase in annual launch rates. In 2024, SpaceX completed 134 launches, and 2025 is on track to surpass 180. With such a high launch cadence, Falcon rockets have cemented SpaceX's dominance in the commercial launch market, far outpacing any competitor. Meanwhile, other aerospace companies continue to struggle with landing and reusability, highlighting the complexity of what SpaceX has mastered. Blue Origin plans to recover and reuse the New Glenn booster via drone ship landing, attempting this feat on its debut mission. However, as expected, early setbacks have shown just how challenging this technology is. What SpaceX now executes weekly, others are still trying to achieve for the first time.
Rocket Lab, with its upcoming Neutron rocket, is also pursuing an innovative reusability approach. While promising, Neutron is still in development and will take years before it can compete with SpaceX in any meaningful way. Across the globe in China, several companies have attempted to replicate SpaceX's technology. From Falcon 9-style rockets to Starship's Mechazilla catching system, a notable example is Cosmoleap, which is developing a Falcon 9 clone and a nearly identical landing tower. However, without true technological mastery, these efforts risk stagnation rather than industry disruption. Ultimately, SpaceX remains years ahead of the competition in landing and reusability, and the addition of landing legs to Starship will only further expand its operational capabilities. The addition of landing legs to Starship has the potential to play a transformative role in its evolution. By introducing multiple landing solutions, SpaceX would enhance Starship's versatility, making it adaptable to a wider range of missions. The combination of Mechazilla's high-precision catch system and traditional leg-assisted landings would create an unprecedented dual-approach strategy for rocket recovery. This advancement would further solidify SpaceX's dominance in launch and reusability, reinforcing its status as the undisputed leader in aerospace innovation. No other company has come close to achieving this level of operational efficiency. With every breakthrough, SpaceX continues to redefine what's possible, setting new industry standards and reshaping the future of spaceflight. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.